Hello, my darlings. Today I have nothing that is particularly funny. Today I have something that is just supposed to be cute. And I hope you like it. This is a Kirishima fanfiction. Kirishima is one of the more... Let's just call him... One of the background characters that managed to become one of the main characters. Which I actually like. He always felt like the Luigi of the franchise to me. I, I bet now a few people are going to laugh, right? Um, anyways, I hope you enjoy the story. Kirishima makes reader. Kirishima makes listener. Whatever you want to call it. In this one you have a reptilian-related quirk, a mutation quirk, and uh, mutation quirks are very rarely spoken about in fanfictions. So I just wanted to put one in. In addition, I wanted to challenge myself. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to take a random line from Undertale and I'm going to use that one as inspiration for an entire story. By the title, you can guess which line that was from Undertale. Yes, my favorite enemy in the entire game. Mommy Monster Drake. The only monster in the entirety of Undertale that actually made me genuinely cry. Now, now, before we get right into the story, I want to uh, plug my merch and my Patreon. It would be really nice if you could check both of them out. Uh, Patreon would be the cheaper option because there I have tiers as low as one or two dollars. Because I have nothing to offer to you there. Uh, but I am thinking of putting my uh, fanfiction script up there just to have, like, something. Um, also my merch store, which would be technically more expensive, but you get something physical in return. Like a shirt. Um, lastly, if you would like to join my beautiful darling doll army, just uh, simply subscribe to the video and ring the bell icon. In addition, if you would like to help me out uh, without having to pay, which is perfectly fine if you can't pay me, then please consider watching the video until the end. Liking or disliking, doesn't matter which one of the two you do, and commenting something down below, please. Thank you. And uh, share the video around. Share it, uh, share it everywhere you can. Share it on Discord. Share it on Twitter. Now, <laughs> let's get right into the show. It was winter. For most people, a nice time of serene Christmas movies. Snowball fights and eggnog. The only people who weren't enjoying it were you and the people who needed to drive to work. You were cursed with a disability, a mutation quirk, making your body very much alike to that of an amphibian. Venom secretion, enhanced agility, and wall crawling, but Sadly, also cold blood. So winter turned into an act of survival that, ironically, was ignored by pretty much everyone. After all, quirks and mutation quirks were the normality now. Of course, you had to have been born in the awkward time where quirks were openly accepted not special, and not powerful enough to do anything truly badass with them. No, that privilege would fall under the next two generations. At least you had it better than your dad's business partner. His quirk was a quickly regrowing pumpkin for a head he could throw. While this made him quite popular at Halloween parties, Try having a serious financial discussion with a jack-o'-lantern that spoke in a heavy New York accent. It was very difficult, to say the least. And unlike your friend Sue, who, despite everything, was still looking quite human, 
Your skin was a smooth, soft pink and required you to regular moisturize it with either cream or water. Plus, thanks to your mother's side of the family, you had these axolotl-like antennas sticking out of your cheeks. At least you could stay dry for a while, allowing you to avoid weird situations where you would have to leave class just to do exactly that. The problem was getting warm to start the day off. You were just so cold. You had troubles walking. Your heater was set on max and you were wearing two layers of clothing, but still it was just freezing. On wobbly legs you made it to the door, being glad it was a Saturday. With shaking hands you opened your door and felt the cool air of the outside waft across your face. A sickening feeling began to build up inside you, and it felt like thousands of needles were shooting right through your face. You just wanted to grab a bite and then immediately go back to bed. After you somehow managed to reach the common room, you sighed in relief. Only Kirishima was present, lifting some drum belts. He threw you a cocky smile as a greeting of sorts, and then kept lifting. Put a shirt on, you mumbled with a blush. Too quiet for him to hear. Stumbling over to the kitchen aisle, you grabbed a chocolate bar and the can of that weird soda brand that often just appeared out of nowhere in the fridge. Halfway back for the common room, you began to feel queasy and groaned loud enough for Kirishima to notice. Yo, something wrong? His face turned to shock when he saw your disoriented frame. Yo, yo! He exclaimed, dropping his weights. Before you blacked out, you felt strong arms grabbing your slender frame. It was just so cold. The first thing you noticed upon regaining conscious was that something warm and soft was wrapped around you, like a heated blanket, and that both your heartbeat and breathing was normal. Kishim must have called someone for help. And then you heard a light snore right behind your ear. Slowly you opened your eyes, followed by a shower of embarrassment. While you were back in your room and your bed, it wasn't really your bed you were lying on. Your lips quivered as you realized that Kirishima was under you. His arms carefully wrapped around you. And you panicked. Did he do something to you while you were blacked out? Was he secretly worse than the little purple guy who was creeping on the other girls? To this day you are not sure whether or not it was an insult or a blessing he kept you alone. Another snore came from Kirishima. He sounded like a big purring cat, a big, soft, and warm purring cat. Wait, why were you thinking that? You blushed and tried to calm down. Whenever you managed to get warm after a blackout, everything just felt so embarrassing. You carefully wiggled your legs. Yeah, you were still wearing pants, probably the same ones. Then you wiggled your toes and confirmed that you still were wearing two layers of socks. With a meek whimper, you stared at the ceiling. Did he really not take advantage of you? You knew you weren't the prettiest girl in UA, but were you too ugly for that even? 
Your blush returned when you realized what you were thinking about. Kishima gulped loudly in his sleep, and his grip tightened. He let out another squeak and began to feel like a rubber ducky. And then... Suddenly, his grip tightened harder, and he shook under you for just a second. And then he groaned. Waking up with a soft, sleep-drunken morning... He looked down at your embarrassed expression. Ah, sorry about this. Why was he smiling so white? You fell and... Like, your skin was really cold, so I thought... I do what Shoji did with Tsu during the license exam. Now this made more sense. You know, keep ya... keep ya warm. Ah, uh, sorry if I was a bit rough, though. It's fine. You whispered barely audible. You felt so ashamed and didn't really know why. You hungry? He asked and you nodded. He let go of your waist and you two sat up. Kishima pointed at your nightstand. There neatly stacked on top of each other were your chocolate bars. After being thoroughly stuffed you happily sighed not even realizing you were sunk back into Kirishima's chest. Now it was his turn to blush. But he had an oddly satisfied look on his face. At the same time, however, he was unsure whether to cuddle up with you again or not. You know, I never had it as easy as normal people. You said with a melancholic tone. Preparing for a long speech, Kirishima propped himself into a more comfortable position behind you. When I was a kid, I was always the oddball. And at the same time, wasn't. I needed special care because of my mutation, but no one cut me some slack because all this is normal now. It's like we live in a world where everybody needs special care, but because everybody needs special care, it's no longer special and it's just normal care and nobody cares. You rolled around and pressed your chest against his, giving him tear-filled puppy eyes. <laughs> Children are awful, Kirishima, especially when they don't understand something. He gave you a reassuring smile, and you sniffled. Why can my quirk be something simple and cool like yours? Why do I need special care that is just so annoying? I just want to play in the snow, like normal kids. Once again, you felt his muscular arms wrap around you. If it helps you. I'm going to take extra special care of you from now on. You looked into his soft eyes. Up until now you haven't seen him as someone so... soft and likable. He always came across as some sort of dumb jock to you. And your heart skipped a beat. Were you falling in love? His hands rubbed over your back for a while. You're feeling better? He whispered into your ear after a while. You bit your lower lip. You wanted to keep cuddling with him. But you were feeling so much better. I, I don't want to lie to you. Kishima chuckled. <laughs> what do you mean? After burrowing your head into a soft and warm chest, he replied, I want to tell you I'm better, but then you will stop cuddling with me. Hearing the desperation in your voice, he simply sighed. I can spend the entire rest of the day with you if you want that. 
Your heart made a jump. Please. Was your reply. He laid back down and grabbed the blanket, pulling it over the both of you. Now, now. No more tears, okay? Kishima said with an almost smug grin. There are no more bullies at UA. And from now on I'm here to protect you. You are safe. You happily closed your eyes. Thank you. <laughs>